started. So thanks everybody to, for joining us today. Um, if you're new to these sessions, uh, this is our Live with Astronomer series. We do these uh, every other week, alternating with our full-length webinars. Uh, Live with Astronomer is meant to be short form, uh, deep dive on a smaller topic and very focused on uh, developers. So we spend most of our time in the code, sort of showing how a particular uh, feature with Airflow or um, sort of adjacent Airflow um, open source tools works. Uh, so just a couple of quick bits of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, this is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording afterwards as well as the code that Tamara is going to go through today. Um, so if you're interested in kind of playing around with it yourself, uh, you will have access to all of that. Um, also, for those that are joining us live today, again, uh, we keep these pretty short, 10 to 15 minutes, but we will have time for Q&A at the end for everybody who joined us live. Uh, so if you have questions as we're going through, feel free to throw those in the chat or the Q&A feature, and either I will answer them uh, or we'll save time at the end and tomorrow we'll answer uh, any Q&A there. Uh, so with that, um, without further ado, we're super excited about the Airflow 2.4 release, which that we're still talking about it, that happened it back in September. And so today's live is going to focus on uh, some of the features that were released in 2.4 with regards to dynamic task mapping. And with that, Tamara, I will hand it over to you. Yes. Thanks, Kenton, and welcome everyone who joined in the meantime to this short Astronomer Life on how to map over multiple parameters when you are doing dynamic task mapping. Now, those of you who joined last week know that we actually had a full length one hour webinar on the topic of dynamic tasks, um, introducing it from the start. So if you are new to the topic and have never used dynamic tasks before, I recommend that after this live, um, you go back and watch the recording of that webinar. But before diving into the code, I wanted to give a quick recap of the most important points about dynamic task mapping. So dynamic tasks generate mapped task instances at runtime based on mapped inputs to one or more parameters. This means you have your DAG and you have one task that is a dynamic task. And every time that DAG runs, in the moment where it reaches the dynamic task, it will decide how many copies of that task it will create. And the copies can vary um, depending on inputs that you provide to that task and how to provide um, the inputs if you're using uh, more than one parameter is what uh, we are going to cover in this live. As Kenton already said, um, F, um, dynamic task mapping was added in Airflow 2.3 and then heavily expanded in Airflow 2.4. This is why we are doing uh, this live and why we did the webinar now, um, that we have much many more options uh, in dynamic task mapping. So upgrading uh, is a really cool thing to do and will give you much more options to uh, map over multiple parameters. If you are doing dynamic task mapping, there are three functions that are important for you. Um, that you call when you are uh, instantiating your task with an operator. Dot partial takes all the parameters that stay static. So if you have a task and you map it, if you have um, a parameter that you want to stay the same in each of the tasks, then you would pass it to dot partial. And afterwards, you would add either dot expand or dot expand quarks. And you pass uh, the parameters that you want to change between the map task instances to those functions. And I will show examples on how to use those both of those functions in a second. There are two more functions that are important when you are using dynamic task mapping, um, .zip and .map, which are helper functions that you call on upstream outputs. I don't have time to dive in deeper on, uh, into those two today, but um, I showed some example of them in the webinar, and there are examples in the codes that will be sent out to you. With that, we can already hop, hop over to the demo. So this is the repository. Uh, you will recognize it from last week. Um, I'm using the same repository. I just added these two DAGs. And today, I'm going to focus on this one live DAG. Let's take a quick look at the overview. Um, I'm going to show five tasks. Um, one shows you how, and three of those are dynamically mapped. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a cross product, how to use expand quarks to map over sets of keyword arguments, um, how to use the output of an upstream task when you are doing mapping with expand quarks, 
and I'm going to show you how to use XCOMS from my, for my dynamically mapped task. All right, let's jump into the code. So we have our standard imports. Um, we instantiate our DAC context, and then we define our first task. It's a very, very simple task. It uses the task flow API. If you are unfamiliar uh, with the syntax at task, um, you can read up on the task flow API in uh, our concept guides. And this function is very simple. It takes three parameters, name, activity, and day, and it returns a string that creates a sentence out of these three parameters. Now, if we want to turn this task into a dynamically mapped task, um, instead of simply calling it with empty uh, brackets, we add that expand. We actually do not need to add that partial here because the task flow API already takes care of the task ID and there is no input in this task that I need to stay static. Theoretically, I could add another um, argument here and then put it in dot partial for it to stay the same in every map task instance, but that's not the case in this example. So I directly call dot expand. And for each of the parameters, I offer several options. So for name, I offer Lilu, Woody, and Avery. Uh, two activities, sit on the laptop and play fetch. And two days, Monday and Tuesday. Now I'm going to stop here for a second. And I'm going to ask you, how many mapped task instances would you expect from this code? So if you run this DAG with these inputs, um, how many map task instances do you think are created? Ah, already several people posting into the chat. Going to give it one more second. Europeans have to do math late in the day. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're both correct in the chat. Um, it's going to be 12. Um, the name, kind of, exactly. Uh, the name gave it away. It's a cross product, so you multiply. Um, the length of each of the lists that contain the options. So we have three names, two activities, two days, three times two times two is 12. We can double check that if we go into the grid view and click on the task, we can see we have 12 map task instances. We can uh, enter any of those map task instances to get more details. Here are the usual details that you would also get on a normal um, on a normal task. And if you click over here, you can see the logs. If you're thinking, I don't have the logs in my grid view, that was added in Airflow 2.4. And here we can see the output of the function. Avery will sit on the laptop on Monday. OK. You can imagine um, this way of uh, of dynamic task mapping is very useful. For example, if you're doing machine learning and you want to combine different hyperparameters and you, you want to have every possible combination of them. Um, this is actually, this will always happen if you pass several parameters to dot expand, it will always create a cross product. So there's no way of changing that. But sometimes you want to have more fine grained control over um, your dynamically mapped tasks. If you um, are someone who frequently comes to our webinars, you will have a little domain knowledge here and know that Avery is in fact a dog. So we're hoping Avery is not gonna sit on the laptop. Um, let's use expand quarks to fix that. Here we have the exact same function, just with a different name. Um, the function does the same thing, but I named it sets of quarks sentences. And this time, instead of calling dot expand, I'm calling dot expand quarks. Now, dot expand quarks always takes a list of dictionaries. Uh, like expand always needs keyword arguments. Um, expand quarks needs a list of dictionaries. And we can pass in several dictionaries, as many as we want. And in each of the dictionaries, we provide one possibility for each of the parameters. So the first dictionary has Lilu for name, sit on the laptop as activity and Monday for day. Now, again, I'm going to ask you, how many map task instances are you expecting from this task? Very good. This time a little less math um, because I only added three. Um, you don't even have to count expand quarks. Um, adds one map task instance for every dictionary that you have in the list. 
Um, these dictionaries could contain uh, even more parameters, as many as your operator takes. And you don't have to provide an option for each of the parameters um, in each of the dictionaries um, unless the parameters are mandatory. So in this case, if I wouldn't provide day, um, it would fail because it doesn't know what day is. But if I would, for example, add a default value for day, then providing day would become optional. We can jump back to the grid view. And we can see Avery will now play fetch on Monday. Perfect. I hope he gets to do that. This is already kind of all of the magic of .expand and expand quarks. Um, if you want a cross product, you use .expand and pass in the options to each of the parameters directly. And if you want more fine-grained control and you have different sets of keyboard arguments in mind, you use .expand quarks. Of course, in a real world DAC, you usually do not have the dictionary dictionaries ready like this, and you are using some upstream output. So I wanted to show you how you can use uh, the upstream output of a task to pass it directly to expand quarks. So in this first task, we have a list of pets, um, and the list contains tuples with the pet name and the pet type. You can imagine that we don't define this um, find this like that, but that this would be uh, stored in a data source. And you don't know how many pets there are for each of the DAG runs. So if you run the DAG once every day, there could be a different number of pets every day. This is the real power of dynamically mapped task that we can have a DAG that is adapted to changing conditions like this. Then we have an upstream task. It's called return quarks. It takes this, these lists of pet, this list of pets and then iterates over them. And for each of them, it exports the pet name and the pet type. And then it creates a dictionary that will contain the pet name, the activity, which type of food they eat, and that they hopefully get to eat every day. These dictionaries get appended into a list. And this list of dictionaries is returned. So we return our data in the same format as up here in a list of dictionaries which means we can directly parse it to expand quarks to the same function that we used here. You already know the question. How many mapped task instances are you expecting? It's very simple this time, I know. It's free again, because we have three pets in our list. Um, we create one dictionary per pet which means we use expand quarks on a list that contains free dictionaries. So we have free map task instances again. Look at this task. And Avery will eat dog food on every day. All right. Now, the fourth thing I want to show you is actually an answer to a question that was asked in the webinar. Um, which was, how do I access the XCOMs created from dynamically mapped tasks? Uh, if you're thinking, what is an XCOM? There's actually a whole uh, concept guide on this. Basically, XCOMs is a way to pass information in between your tasks. Um, the concept guide is called Passing Data Between Tasks on our docs site. And here, I assigned the output of this dynamically mapped task to an object. And I can simply pass that object to another function. And it will contain all the individual outputs of um, this dynamically mapped task. So sentences contains a list with each of the sentences that was created, which means I can simply index into it and then add some exclamation points, for example. Um, I could also iterate over sentences and do something to all of them. Um, you can use this to have a reducing task. For example, if you have a dynamically mapped task and each of the mapped task instances create um, returns a number, you could have the list of numbers put into a function and then, for example, sum them up. So if we're going back, it will print the first sentence with emphasis. Lilu will sit on the laptop on Monday. All right. 
Now, I've shown you these examples using dynamic task mapping. If you are thinking, well, how am I using this with traditional operators and are looking for some syntax, I have this second DAG that I added um, to the repository that shows the exact same um, the exact same processes, but using a traditional operator. Um, you can go over this and check it out for yourselves in the repository. Okay. One more slide, uh, one more slide summarizing uh, what I've talked about. So basically, if you're, map if you're mapping on multiple parameters, you have three main options. And two of them I showed you in this live. Um, you can uh, put your inputs to parameters in the expand function. This will create a cross product of all the possible combinations of inputs. Very useful if you're doing machine learning and want to combine different hyperparameters. Um, if you're doing ETL or if you're using certain traditional operators that always have two mandatory arguments that kind of go together, like, for example, uh, if you're moving objects from one S3 bucket to another, you always have the source bucket and destination bucket that goes together. Um, then you can pass your list of dictionaries with different sets of keyword arguments to expand quarks, have more fine grained control over what you're mapping over. And then there's the third option, which I didn't cover because it's a little bit different. It also uses dot expand, but it only works um, with parameters that take several positional arguments. Um, and here you can use the dot zip method that I uh, quickly mentioned at the start on an upstream output to zip together different upstream outputs. So if you have two tasks and they both to um, return a list, you can zip together the first elements, the second elements, and the third elements in each of these lists into tuples. And then you can pass it to a parameter that um, unpacks that tuple again. Um, again, in the repository, there's um, a DAG called, I think, simple zip example um, that covers that. And several other zip examples are in the repository. I hope you're eager to learn more about dynamic task mapping. It's a great feature. Um, you can look at our concept guide uh, with this link, and you can also rewatch the, um, the recording of the webinar from last week. With that, I'm ready for questions. Awesome. Thanks, Tamara. That was a great whirlwind overview of mapping over multiple parameters. As Tamara said, obviously, this is a kind of a big topic. So this is designed to help you with if expand quarks is what you're looking for. Obviously, we have other resources for uh, any other methods. And uh, I don't think I've seen any questions so far. So if you do have any questions, those of us, those of you who are alive, um, throw them in the chat now and we're happy to answer them. Uh, while we give that just a minute tomorrow, if you wanna go to the next slide, I will do a quick promo here for our upcoming Astro Days in Chicago. So uh, if you're interested in learning more kind of about the future of the Airflow project and what Astronomer does and how Astronomer's products um, help with Airflow, uh, managing Airflow at scale, uh, we are having an in-person event in Chicago. So for any of those of you in the US Midwest area, uh, if you'd like to attend, you can register. Um, if you're not in that area, no worries. We will have more of these events kind of across the world. Um, and coming months, years. Um, so stay tuned for any of that. But I uh, just want to throw that out there in case anybody here is interested. And I'm still not seeing any questions in the chat or Q&A. So we'll take that to mean that everybody is super, super comfortable with expand quarks and is ready to use it in their own DAGs. Um, as we said, if that's not the case, uh, we will be sending out all of the materials from today's webinar. So you'll have those as a reference. Uh, and look out for any upcoming events where we'll continue to kind of cover new features in Airflow 2.4 uh, and, and newer version, Airflow versions as they come out. So thanks everybody for joining us today and we hope you all have a great rest of your week. Have a great week and thank you. Bye. Bye.